Good evening and welcome to another in our series of Tuesday evening Bible study. Last week we looked at the life of Jesus Christ and we looked specifically at his origin and his divinity. And this evening we'll be looking at the life of Jesus Christ. Indeed, we are in for a good time and then the final one will be next week where we look at the Passion Week and that aspect of his life on earth that indeed ended with his crucifixion. Please call someone and tell them that the Bible study has begun and we are in indeed for a good time together studying and looking into God's word rather introspectively. So let us pause and sing with me this song as I play this karaoke and a song that we all well know and if you were to guess, I'm sure you would know which song I'm going to be doing. Yes. Now, the Lord is there, building my temple here, a palace of praise, a throne of thanksgiving, built for the King of kings. Sing out the lordful song, sing along, come on. His love goes on and on Where praises are bound His glory surround us Building His temple here yeah. Sing out the Lord in karaoke Ooh. Yeah, come on, you can stand to your feet And you can dance if you like Sing out the Lord is here Building my temple here, ranking only say so. A praise, a throne of thanksgiving, built for the King of Kings. Sing out a joyful song. His love goes on and on. Where praises are found, His glory surround us. Building his temple here. Sing out the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. God, thank you so much for being here this evening. Of course, last week we met and we had a good talk and have been receiving your questions. And please feel free at the end of this evening to send your questions. Also, let me hear exactly what you're thinking, what's on your mind. And first we had a, a question, in fact of all the questions, which I'm sure by now some of you would have known the answer to the questions. We have these questions asking us, really what is meant when I said that Jesus Christ was not born? Well, in fact, what I should have said is was not created because indeed he was born of a woman. But then the intent was to communicate that Jesus' birth and the origin of Jesus Christ is not like any ordinary child. As a matter of fact, the term used for the Greek term used for the word in the New Testament, which speaks of him being begotten, that well-known word in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, is the word monogenes, which actually means the only legitimate child. Of course, special. Of course, we know that indeed he was special because he was not born of the seed of man, specifically it was not Joseph's son at all. We heard that, that verse, which we'll be talking about later on, where we, where the, where the angels appeared to, 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 to Mary and told her that that which she was going to be giving birth to is of the Holy Spirit. And indeed, her, her, her cousin Elizabeth and Joseph himself would have gotten information on that. So yes, Jesus Christ was indeed born a normal, like a normal child would have been born, but his origin was different from any other person who has ever been born. In fact, he was never ever the child of a seed of a man and indeed of a woman. He was a special uh, work of the Holy Spirit, but born as human being and he is the God-man. There's also the belief that um, begotten means that he was actually begotten to be the Christ at birth. Some persons believe that he became the Christ child, that divinity, that divine aspect of him be, became attainable at birth, and that's the concept of, of, of monogenes. Some persons believe that his divinity began at conception or even before he became that divine child, but in any case, our divine person. But we believe that Jesus Christ is the one with the Father, the second person of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and indeed he was in the beginning with the Father, 
as is said in John chapter 1. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by Him, and there was nothing made except that was made. Well, to go right along, we without recap that last week, we looked at his, at his divinity, his origin, and we saw that indeed he was with the Father at creation, according to St. John 1 and verse 1. He was, all things were made by him. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. We also saw that he was prophesied about as being the God with us, Emmanuel, and he became human being at birth and shared the status of being the God-man. This week, however, we are going to be looking in our second of three studies on the life of Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus Christ. Indeed, he came and he was not a bystander. He came and he was not ignored, though he was born in a lowly place and of, of insignificance, of course. But then he did not continue to be insignificant. He continued to grow to significance, divine, eternal, biblical theological significance as we discover who this Christ is and so this evening we'll be looking at his life the life of Jesus Christ of course there's a first that says you know in the fullness of time God sent his son there's a time in history that God sent his son and history would have recorded that this child was indeed born I find it interesting when I watch secular documentary and it says that talks about the sect of persons who once lived and that they had this follower they were following this 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 Jewish man who wanted them to eat his flesh and to drink his blood and they were like a little cult at the time because of the predominant religion of Judaism was there and the prominent uh, religious characters and positions and posts were not shared by himself he was indeed one who was predicted prophesied about that believed on uh, as a popular entity but a uh, popular person but then eventually rose to prominence and even when he was leaving not of great significance or prominence but by then had convinced the then world that he was in fact the messiah and if not the then world that he claimed to be the messiah there were those who believed that he was followed him gave their lives for him and by the turn of the century and in fact you know many centuries after that increasing significance of Jesus Christ became even more prominent well this evening we'll be looking at his life and what the first thing we want to look at is his entrance or his call what gave him not gave us knowledge of him and the Bible says that in his entrance the Old Testament predicted the entrance of Jesus Christ and so Isaiah the prophet in verse in chapter 9 and verse 6 says unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be up on his shoulder and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace so we saw that yes the Old Testament and be interesting to note as I continue to tell you that between the Old Testament and the New Testament we have had 400 years of silence and of course the prophecy of Jesus Christ spanned that silence and came into prominence as they believed in the prophet Isaiah and Isaiah made it very well known there is an, one unique translation which translate this as a mighty God that is also wrong all translation authentic translation and every other translation had Jesus Christ to be God the incarnate Son of God and the eternal one that was promised and prophesied and now being seen into the world so we saw Isaiah speaking of his of, of, of the prediction of his entrance we also saw another the pronouncement of his entrance as is predicted in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23 the Old Testament predicted his entrance and now the New Testament predicts his entrance and it says behold a virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel which means God with us and we saw that indeed Mary got that revelation from the angel who appeared to her and called her blessed and she you know she, oh, she was so humbled by the fact that she could have been called that being a lowly little girl who born in the ghetto of Nazareth at the time and so you know we saw other revelations at the time coming telling and predicting the entrance of Jesus Christ 
And so we know that he was going to be coming because not only Mary got it a private revelation so that anybody could dispute the authenticity of her pregnancy, but we also saw that indeed Joseph, her husband, actually got um, a prediction. And so we see that Joseph got one. Elizabeth, her cousin, also got a word of his coming. Simeon, the priest, also got one. And he was sure that this was it for him. Then we look at the purpose, God's plan for him to be here. God's plan for him to be here, God's plan that which was revealed in the Old Testament and revealed in the New Testament has now came to place. Well, God, the Bible tells us that the will of God was made manifested in him because he was, he, it was, he was in the world that the world through him might be saved. It was God's will that he be here so that the world through him might be saved. That was it born of the will of God and the purpose for his birth was made known in John chapter 3 and verse 17. That verse that follows that awesome verse of 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son but that the world through him might be saved. We saw also that you know Jesus, it was said that Jesus came from heaven to do the will of the father and he said that himself so he also was not confused as to his origin and the purpose of him coming. And so, yes, others were, and constantly through his life and ministry, he would make mention of the fact that he's here to do his Father's will. And so he came from heaven to do his Father's will. So his purpose was pretty much known, and he articulated that. And, of course, the men of, the, of his time, and especially those persons who got the revelation of his time, would have made it very clear as to his reason for coming. Interesting in the life of Jesus Christ, as we must know, is not only his call, where he was sure, where the, the Old Testament testified of him, of his authenticity and him coming, the New Testament did likewise. He was assured and made it very clear also. But then what was clear in the New Testament, in the life of Jesus, and no one else before him, neither anyone after him, is his mission his mission. Why was he going to be here? And it was acknowledged by him. And understand that mission actually means action. Mission is action. What was to be is action at his coming. Well, there's an interesting verse in Isaiah 61 and verse 1, which made, made very, very clear why he was going to be here. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, a, has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the, to, 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 to the captive, and to recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That was his really mission for coming, the action that he would have engaged. And can I tell you, even today, and even significant and relevant to what we are experiencing today is the action of Jesus Christ. Of course, we read it, and if we look deeply into it, this is what the church teaches, or ought to be teaching, and this is what we believe Jesus Christ is here for. He is here because he was anointed by the Spirit to preach the gospel, which is the main message, the message of transformation, to, set up, to, send, to heal the, the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, uh, to liberate the captive, and to recover the sight of the blind, and to set up liberty to those who are oppressed. If ever a time that we need to be assured that this is why Jesus Christ is here, it is indeed now. Then, of course, his purpose, his, 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 his mission was indeed clearly stated there, but then also his vision was, was clear. And vision actually means the ultimate result of action. And his vision, which is the ultimate result of action, is as he has stated, came that he might give us eternal life. He says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Who could have said it better than himself in St. John chapter 10 and verse 10? But then in other parts of the Bible, we have read that indeed he came for the purpose and right through the the, the New Testament and even the Old Testament, the, the, the purpose, stated purpose, implied purpose, prophetic purpose of him coming was to save his people from their sins. 
clearly that's the name why he was given Emmanuel. So in summarizing this first introductory aspect of the study this evening, is that Jesus Christ came to die, to do the will of the Father in saving dying souls and to prevent them from going to hell. Simply putting, he came to die. He himself believed theologically that he went to hell and indeed that was in paying for the sins of humanity. Well, let us now look at the early life of Jesus Christ. And we see that when he came on the scene as a babe born in Bethlehem, where the Magi visited him, we were just a child and it is still in doubt as to where exactly he was born or even the time exactly where he was born. But this was, it, was in, in, it is indisputable that indeed he was born and was, history would have recorded that he was born by the, you know, in, in, in Bethlehem. Then, of course, he fled to Egypt to escape Herod, that tyrant, were threatened by the coming of the Christ child, the king of the Jews. And so he had an onslaught for everyone who was supposed to be at the age of Jesus Christ in his own estimation. And so he fled to Egypt. And then sometime after, he returned to Nazareth, where he grew up, you know, and found um, favor with persons who would have grown to admire him for the purpose for which he had actually come. And then we would have, re we would have recorded that not long after that the first appearance of him returning from Egypt was his appearance in the temple where he was talking to doctors and lawyers and were indeed marveling them with his supreme wisdom and knowledge never before had they seen a child who was so you know so engulfed and so knowledgeable and so able to to articulate with these learned persons and so his mother would have there looking for him while he was busy getting used to being what his father asked him to be so his early life was indeed one of engagement one of doing what the father would have him to do taking on the status quo and the, the knowledge the, the religious men and the, the persons who have the intelligence of the time and no doubt he was known for that and was said to be who he was because of his knowledge grew up to be called rabbi because of supreme, superior knowledge and wisdom then his that early aspect of his entrance and of his early ministry, early life, gave way to the actual ministry of Jesus Christ. And of the ministry of Jesus Christ, and this is interesting, began because there was a period of silence around about the time when people say he was about 12 years old. You know, we have no knowledge as to exactly the age. But it, 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 there was a period of silence, and nobody knew about him for many, many years until he came on the scene, then again at around 30 or so years old, where he began his actual public ministry. And it began there with the baptism, as recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels. And he came on the scene and was recognized. And that's a mysterious recognition. By, by John the Baptist, who was indeed baptizing men at the time. Jesus Christ made an appearance, and he said, you know, I should be baptizing you, and you know that discourse, and he was indeed baptized by John the Baptist in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the dove fell upon him, the, 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 the Holy Spirit fell upon him like a dove, and that testified of the, and the voice from heaven says, this is my, my son. He said, these are just in, interesting incidents in the life, of, of Jesus Christ that authenticate the person of Jesus Christ who we now study and who believe in this believe on and is studying in this Bible study. So yes, his baptism was the first entry in the second half of his ministry. And let me just mention that next week we will do that final aspect of his ministry. But then we want you to know that yes, the first appearance he made after that period of silence was his baptism. But then after his baptism, he was led up to the temple, up to the mount, up to the, the wilderness, to be tempted of the devil, and that where he spent some period of forty days, and so being tempted of the devil by the Jordan desert, by Judean desert, by the Judean desert, being tempted of the devil, and that discourse is very well known. It's symbolic that after his baptism and that authentication of his divinity, the, the Christ who came to save the sins of men, that he was now being subjected to temptation himself from the devil himself, the supreme tempter, the roaring lion who seek to devour whom we may, was no tempting. Isn't that something? And we must also expect that as Christians, that as soon as we make a clear declaration as to what we're about and our allegiance to Jesus Christ, expect there to be temptation. And that's how it is. 
Then as the ministry continued, we saw his, the commissioning of his disciples. Commissioners of the, of the 12 disciples, again recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We, and and the, much question, or many questions are asked about this um, cho choosing of the 12 disciples, why he chose Judas, where were the 12 before he, he, his selection, Did, were they meeting him for the first time while they were so compliant, or there was a sense of divine endowment that would make them just say yes, having come in a realization. We really don't know. But what we saw is a kind of compliance, in fact, an unequivocal, you know, irresistible compliance to the call of, of, of Jesus Christ and to, the, to their commission. And they stuck to that. Their only out, outlet to that agreement and that sub, uh, subscribing to his ministry and that following of him as their Messiah and as their Lord was, in fact, the avenue, the outlet of death. For they all died you know, with making profession. Even Judas himself regretted the fact that he did what he did. So they all, in fact, came into that. So his commission of the Twelve was an interesting aspect of his ministry. And in that aspect of his commission, the next aspect of his life, after his baptism and the temptation and all the commission of the Twelve, is an interesting aspect of the life of Jesus Christ, which has impacted our entire life. We are speaking of the teachings of Jesus Christ. And we, he went right into the teachings that he would have been, been doing from that moment on until the time that he left. His ministry was characterized by a series of, series of teaching and about, the, about the kingdom, about how we are, to, we are as Christians, the beatitude, through lessons of parables and miracles. His life was a series of teaching prior to, of course, the most authentic aspect of it, which was his death. Of course, his teaching would have caused us to know whom he is and, uh, and, and, and believe on him in the world. And so teaching and his teaching as the Christ child, as the Messiah now, was important in the life of the believer. And so the first series of teachings, after he would have come down from the mountain, having defeated the devil, the devil could not win, and all the presentations, all the offers that he made to Jesus Christ, Jesus accepted them and rejected them not accepted them not and rejected every single one and so we had that awesome sermon on the mount recorded in matthew chapter 5 6 and 7 and you please go back and read some of these very very interesting readings in which we have the you know the beatitude matthew 5 6 and 7 and the beatitude is often used as persons as prescriptive of, of, of what Christians are to be. But it speaks of the character. This aspect of the teachings of Jesus Christ speak to the character of his followers. Our character, even as believers, having received that transformation by the power of God. This beatitude, the beatitudes, speak to what is the character of those who accept Jesus Christ as Savior, who believed on Christ, how we are to be in the world and they were indeed descriptive and not prescriptive. I find that very interesting because these, this character, these characteristics, as were articulated by the Beatitude, they were created in us, not because of our ability to understand and to comply and be obedient to the things he said, but in us, the spirit that lives in us enables us to be what God expects us to be. And so when you look at us, we would have seen what must be seen is what the beatitude articulate or meek we ought to be the poor in heart that we ought to be you know the merciful that we should really is descriptive also an interesting aspect of his teaching in that sermon on the mount was the lord's prayer and this is interesting because in not only was it important that jesus christ was now telling his disciples and telling us how we are to be in the world, but he was now telling us how we are to be enabled to be what we are to be in the world. And so, we, you know, we can't be, we, to, to be enabled to be what we are to be in the world is to believe in Christ, is to believe in Christ. And so, yes, that was important also, what we are to be in the world, but then more than what we are to be in the world is how we are to be empowered. And the teaching of how to be empowered is by prayer. And so the prayer was, Our Father, 
And of course, that's a whole study in itself, the Lord's Prayer. But then, that is how we are to be enabled to be what we are to be by praying to God, by engaging. And he himself was empowered to carry out his mission by engaging regularly with the Father. And we are also encouraged to engage regularly with the Father by, by, in time of prayer. And it was a model prayer, not for us to be repetitive about it, but a model prayer that empowers and enables us to be what we are to be in the world. And so, you know, we, 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 we looked at the Lord's Prayer instructively. Now, another aspect of his, of, his, of, of his teaching is the whole business of the miracles. So shortly after he would have articulated what we are to be and how we are to be and how we are to know who we are as Christian, we, 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 he also authenticate himself and speak to us by miracles, examples of the possibility that we possess and that was endured in us. You know by what we are as Christians as we are as Christians and so we have miracles in the form of faith healing miracles in the form of exorcism miracle in the form of the resurrection miracle in the forms of control over nature and certainly miracle in the forms of forgiveness of sin in those miracles he authenticated himself as God as the Son of God as the one who came from heaven to earth and be man but more than that he also said greater things than i have done you will do because i go unto my father and the very things that he did to authenticate himself we did i put it to you therefore that it is in this that we know that we, the father lives in us and the same power resurrection power that raised him from the dead and that he left with us in the person of the holy spirit lives in us and give us the ability to do exactly what he did while he was here Important also are not only his teachings, as is seen in the Beatitudes, as speaks to our character, and the miracles that speaks to the possibilities we possess, but then there were the parables, which speaks of the kinds of principles and precepts by which we are to conduct our lives. And a third of his whole teaching was through parables, as recorded in, 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 in Luke, in, in, in fact, in the whole Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels. And we find that there were actually 23 um, parables in the book of Luke. Um, there were about eight in, 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 in Mark. And, and I'll tell you, I, I, next week I'll tell you how much is in Matthew. But then it is interesting to note that they all recorded the parables of Jesus Christ that were used as principles and precepts by how we are to conduct our lives. And finally, what is important is that, yes, some in articulating these parables and making himself known as to who he is and whom he is, many did not believe on him. Many did not subscribe to whom he is. But those who followed him would have made it very, very clear that they believed that he was who he was. And they lauded him. Although at some point in time, many changed their minds. But that which indeed was the most significant aspect of his life and teaching were that many were being converted, turning to God from Judaism, turning away from the rituals of the time, and were looking to him as he has stated as the one who had come to change the world and to change the hearts of men. The, the Christmas call we sing I find is very, very important to, for me and indeed very instructive in this sermon, in this series. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Jesus Christ came specifically for the purpose of giving birth to lost humanity. And his life on earth was important. As, as man, he showed us that we too can indeed reflect the person of God in human flesh. And this becomes even more real in, in, in subsequent lesson, in, um, study when we look at what he would have done and made possible in the resurrection of him uh, from the dead. And, of, and, and the teaching and the kingdom of God was extremely important. And the focus of his teaching was indeed the kingdom of God that he had taught during his life that there is the kingdom of this world, but there is the kingdom of God's dear son. And so interesting as is articulated in the Gospels is that men by faith in him and conversion were being translated from the kingdom of darkness 
into the kingdom of God's dear son. We are being translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. And while we are in this world, as he made very clear, as he describes the believers, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. And he lived in the world, but he was not of the world. And he shows us that we too must be in the world, but not of the world. And the principles and practices and philosophies that govern the behavior and the institutions of this world must be different from the ones that govern the church. And so having done, taught the beatitude, having taught, seen the miracles, and having heard the parables, he established that the kingdom of heaven must be like what is articulated in his main message and his word to us. And that's what we are on earth, but we don't, we are not captivated or consumed by the things that the average person, or may I should say, should not be, because we are not. And our very lives bear witness of the fact that we are in the world, but we are indeed not of the world. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the divine God, second person of the Godhead, born to show humanity that indeed we can. And the rest of his life, after his teaching, would have made possible, proven that it is possible, made it possible by his death and resurrection, which we will touch next week when we look at the passion of Jesus Christ. And so let us be not be perturbed. Let us be encouraged, especially in this time. What are the examples? What are the significance of the life of Jesus Christ? And coming from last week when we talk about his, his origin and his birth, what is important in the life of Jesus Christ is that there is indeed a God who lived in the world, a God who walked this earth, a God who did what he wanted to do in this world. And what he wanted to do was to carry out the will of the Father so that we might understand even fully what is God's expectations of us. And that's the whole purpose of studying the Word of God. By it are your servants warned, and the keeping of the Word of God is great reward. But we understand how we are to be in the world, which is important. And now, as the challenges of life and the challenges of this world becomes even more imperative, and, and, and become even more a task and, and a draconious task for us that, that, that we are called to live and we know that indeed we can live you know, soberly, righteously and God in this world because Jesus Christ. You know, no wonder the Bible calls us to a certain kind of holiness, to a certain kind of lifestyle, a certain kind of lifestyle that though we think might not be possible, is highly possible because in Christ it has been made possible. We know, and his life and teaching has made that very, very, very clear. So let me just say then, in this final aspect of this study, that there were some, after he would have made himself very, very clear, after he would have made himself um, known who he indeed was, there are some who listened carefully, understood carefully, but then they rejected his teaching because his teaching our teachings conflicted with what gave them prominence, with what gave them significance. So yes, and I'm not talking about those who just did not believe that he was, and so turn away, you know, in ignorance and turn away in unbelief. I'm talking about there were those who believed, but because of their insistence that what they hold to would not give way to what he taught them, they, they, they neglected, they refused to adhere to his prescription, to his divine instruction, to what was his call to make clear. In fact, what's interesting is that he came not to change the laws and the prophets. He had not come to give them that which was different. And very often he drew us examples and drew upon the Old Testament when he speaks of the word of God, when Jesus speaks of the word, he spoke of the Old Testament that they already were believing in. And that was intended to convince them that indeed it was who he was. The life of Jesus Christ and the teaching of Jesus Christ ought to be a continuation of, of Judaism, a continuation of what the Jews held to that had now been given away. The rituals and the ceremonies were becoming and had become more significant in Jesus Christ. Even the most significant of, of ritual that they held on to, that of the Passover that was observed in Egypt and gave, gave way to them as they left Egypt 
and, and, and came to, to Canaan because God had proven himself mighty on their behalf and, and no match was no no match for fear was no match for him and, and they were released from Egypt that was was celebrated by the Jews in the form of the Passover and Jesus Christ himself become the Passover lamb that's another, that's another aspect of his t life and teaching the kind of type Apology that we ascribe to him where indeed he was the lamb of God as he made it very clear that takes away the sins of the world he was that Passover lamb he was that high priest of the Old Testament he was that water you know he was all that all the significant rituals and rites and and covenants that were made you know at different places seem all to point to Jesus Christ who was coming and no doubt he said, I came unto my own and my own received me not. Because they should have recognized and hold on. But as I said, there were persons who refused to accept because his teachings conflicted with what would have given them prominence. Also, there are those who, who heard him and they reject, rejected him because they, you know, they, 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 they were unbelievers. They, didn't just, they just did not believe. They didn't they, they, they know that it was true, but they refused to accept because to accept would bring a change of their lives. And might I just say, might, might, might be those who were influenced by the devil. And so we must answer the question this evening at the end of the study. What impact does the life of Christ have on you? What impact would you like the life of Christ to have on you? Would you like it to have just a, a, an intellectual impact? Or would you like it to have a transforming impact? Or you would like it to have a redemptive impact? Or you would like to have a witnessing impact? Or all, or all the above. I want to gain more knowledge of him. I want to change my philosophy of life by my knowledge of him. I want my life to be changed because of him. Or indeed, I would like to be able to having experienced a transformation myself to tell others about it. If you have watched and indeed was blessed by this study this evening. Then, pause with me for a brief time of prayer as I ask you to accept Christ either with a greater knowledge, with, it, with, a, with, a, great, with, a, with a change of your mind and philosophy, or a change of your heart. Father, by your word, speak to someone who has watched and is watching. Bring change and life and renewed emphasis on you and your word. Give them a desire to tell others about you in Jesus' name. Why don't you subscribe to this channel? It's a wonderful thing to do. Let me tell you that you can look forward to other programs here on YouTube. Just put uh, that, um, select the Portmore Holiness Christian Church, enter, and you'll see the logo and you can enter into that. Also, you can reply to us by put the Holiness Christian Church phone number in your phones at 876 9896004 and select and then of uh, course access the icon the, the whatsapp icon of the church and then you can send us a message telling us indeed we are to uh send you whatever information you might need also for those of you who need to fulfill your obligations to the holiness christian church you can call the church office and you can indeed call the church office and make your obligations uh, be, 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 be known that you have it and you'd like to drop it off or you'd like to send it to the bank they'll give you the bank information but then keep your commitments your commitments to be in charge of persons as leaders your commitment to be in touch with one another and certainly if nothing else pray for each other and in support of the government's emphases remember stay clear of others 